White tigers have been mesmerizing humans for centuries and remain a regular crowd pleaser at zoos and sanctuaries across the world. However, these stunning creatures are not as magical as they first appear. They are the product of a recessive gene and profit-driven inbreeding. White tigers are Bengal tigers, the same as their orange and black brethren, and are not a separate species that has evolved to live in the Serbian snow, as many people assume. What people often call the snow tiger or the royal white tiger is not a real species. They are caused by a very rare genetic mutation that is called leukism. This mutation prevents the pigment from colouring the skin and fur, which is why we see white fur, chocolate stripes, blue eyes, and a pink nose. This mutation is so rare that it is estimated that only one in every 10,000 tigers born in the wild is white. Due to this mutation robbing them of their camouflage, white tigers in the wild rarely survive long enough to pass on their genes. Therefore, white tigers are only found in captivity. The white tiger is not a separate subspecies, and therefore not in danger of extinction. They do not live anywhere on the globe where their white coloration would help them survive. They do not have a native habitat. For years, breeders and exhibitors have been using the excuse that white tigers are an endangered species, so they need to keep breeding them, which is completely false. In reality, white tigers are being bred to make money and not as part of any species survival plan. A white tiger cub can sell for as much as 60,000 US dollars. The inbreeding of white tigers began in 1951, when a white tiger named Mohan was removed from the wild and bred back to his daughters and granddaughters. For a long time, it was believed that all white tigers descended from Mohan, but it was discovered that another source of white tigers came from a cross between a Bengal and a Serbian that took place in 1976. This inbreeding leads to several severe health problems in white tigers, and sometimes even in the orange and black cubs in the same litter. These health problems are generally kept a secret from the public and can include spinal deformities, cleft palates, club feet, mental impairments, defective organs, immune deficiencies, hip dysplasia, and bulging eyes. Also, the gene that is responsible for the white coloration causes the optic nerve to be connected to the wrong side of the brain, which means that all white tigers are cross-eyed, even if their eyes look normal. Because this gene is so rare, and there are so many birth defects, the death rate of white tiger cubs is astonishingly high. When an orange and a white tiger are bred, only 1 in 4 cubs are born white, and of that, 80% die from birth defects. Only 1 in 30 of the surviving white cubs will be suitable for display. So, what happens to the excess orange and black cubs, and the white cubs not suitable for display? The white cubs rarely end up in accredited facilities, but end up being killed or sold to neglectful facilities. The outcomes for the orange and black cubs are not much better. Most end up being sold into the pet trade, becoming victim of canned hunts, or being killed and sold for parts. Today, sanctuaries are working very hard to educate the public about the horrors surrounding the breeding of white tigers, but it is hard for the public to believe all these horrible and sad stories. Always remember that when you are looking at a white tiger, what caused that white tiger and the health problems that it could currently be suffering. Also, don't forget how many white tiger cubs it took to get one normal looking one and the fate of that one's littermates. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching!